he is gracious to all of you that are here for the very first time and those of you who are watching online we say praise the Lord to Louisiana we say praise the Lord to Atlanta we say praise the Lord to Mississippi we say praise the Lord to Utah we say praise the Lord to Wisconsin we say praise the Lord to Alabama for people are watching all over the place now I may have missed some but we say praise the Lord to you anyhow this afternoon just for a little while I want to talk to your hearts about the saving gospel of Jesus Christ the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. And I might as well clear the air now. I'm not going to be long. Sometimes people come to church, <clears throat> excuse me, and they come with the anticipation of just being in service 30 minutes, 45 minutes. But it's a dangerous thing when you come into an apostolic church. Because this is the place where the presence of God dwells. And we don't come into his presence for 45 minutes. We do believe in allowing God to have his way. We do believe in letting him do what he chooses to. We don't believe in being structured when it comes down to the presence of God. Because he can do whatever he chooses to. And being in his presence has a way of causing the time to pass. And before you know it, you done been in his presence three hours. Don't worry, you're not going to be here like that. <laughs> but today, <clears throat> I happened to see Brother Tony and Sister Raquel, you have our prayers, praying for you that God would comfort you. We are here whatever you have need of. We are here and we are prayerful. We are your brothers and sisters. And don't feel shame. We're not people who just say, you know, if you need something, call me. So, whatever we can do to be of help and assistance to you, we are here and we will do just that. In the book of Luke, chapter number 19, <clears throat> I want to draw your attention to verse number 10. A lot of times when we come into a setting like this, I don't believe that we in totality comprehend what it really means to be in the presence of God. I don't think we really understand the blessing it is to be in the house of God in a time like this. Jesus made it very clear that he came to seek and to save that which is lost. And whether we understand it or not, <clears throat> because of our sinful condition, the Bible makes it very clear to us as his people now that at one point in time, 
you and I were in the world without God and no hope. Had nothing going for us. No matter how well we cook. No matter how we dress. No matter how much money we had in the bank of what our prestigious jobs may have been. We were in the world without him. And we had no hope. But I am grateful today that God has at some point in time allowed us to come into a setting like this in the sinful state that we were in in fact, we had no idea how dramatic the state was. Just being in the world without God and no hope. We really can't comprehend that as it relates to his holiness. But he took the time to draw us to himself. He took the time to rescue us from a condition that we could not help ourselves in. He made it clear to us that no man can come to the Father. When he says man, that means man or woman. Male or female. Nobody can come to God except the Spirit drew him that's a blessing by itself if you have been filled with the Holy Spirit at all it is because God has showed you great mercy and great grace to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit is what we as apostolic believers stand on because to have the Holy Ghost is to have the very life of God in a raggedy clay temple. To have the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God give utterance. That's the mercy of God that has been shown to you that your repentance and your faith has met my approval and I've given you power now to be my servant. Mm. Luke records. He. Being the one that was perfect in understanding. He writes to us here in the book of Luke. Chapter number 19 verse number 10. He says. Verse number 9. And Jesus said unto him. This day. Salvation come to this house. For as much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the son of man comes to seek and to save. It's not just enough to come to the house of God because he's seeking. But he not only comes to seek but he also came to save came to redeem, came to buy us back. He came to, as my late pastor would say, he came to fetch us. Hmm. Came to draw us out. Came and given us hope and life everlasting. The Lord always kept in view of his coming to earth. Again, he reiterates in Luke 19 that he came to seek and to save that which is lost. Jesus is stating this purpose in response to the crowd which grumbled that he had gone to be a guest of a man who was a known sinner. Hmm. The chief of tax collectors. Hmm. 
Zacchaeus. Jesus is saying precisely, I am going to be a guest in a great sinner's house. That was a lot of, mm, in those days because how do you become or proclaim to be the son of righteousness but you deal with publicans and sinners you sit down and you eat with them you walk and talk with them for you know how they rob the people and overcharge them y'all know we don't like taxes And it's amazing how Uncle Sam will charge you and then you got to pay it. But then to try to get it back, it takes forever to get it back. Or they're looking for something you may owe and say, well, well, anyway. It was very, very clear that Jesus had a mission when he came. Now remember who he is. He is God to himself. The other day I had on a shirt that says Jesus is God. And I was picking up my cleaning and a lady was walking a dog and she said, Oh yes he is, Jesus is God. I actually forgot I had the shirt on. Because I'm wondering who she's talking to. And because he's God, there is a type of attitude that his people should have toward him. There is a mindset that we as the people of God should have because our God is God. He rules in the kingdom of men. He lifts up one and takes down another. He rolled and tread the wine press by himself. And when he couldn't find anybody else to do it, the Bible says he did it with his own hand. Mm. He didn't leave this salvation for any angel because there was one third of the angels of heaven that rebelled against him and y'all know the story that he kicked Lucifer out and he said behold Satan fell from heaven like lightning but when it came down to rescuing you I'm not trusting an angel with this this is too precious so I'm going to spin myself a body going to make myself a cocoon so to speak I'm going to wrap myself in grave clothes because that's what all of us in this room got on right now when I say that I'm referring to the albatross around your neck called your flesh your fallen nature your fallen nature is against the revealed will of God. Paul made it clear and he said, when I would do good, evil was always present. That that I find myself doing, I know I shouldn't, but that that I know I should do, I can hardly attain it. My Lord. Mm. So he knew what we were up against. This is why he said, I come to seek and to save that which is lost. Came to ransom and to rescue mankind from the clutches of sin and degradation. I am grateful today that a man 38 years ago I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues that the Spirit of God give utterance and guess what I'm still here because that power has a power to keep you if you desire to be kept this is not to say that I hadn't made any mistakes for all you perfect ones I had to learn how to walk with God. Learn how to suffer 
over some things and learn how to get your footing and once you get your footing and who he is and what he has done you will find yourself being steady mm. ah, that's why coming to the house of God is so important to the child of God don't take it lightly when you come into a setting like this you come to hear what the spirit is saying to the church because the Lord is soon to come back and it is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ that saves an individual let me say this while it's in my spirit because I do believe that we are on the cusp of the great evacuation of the church and the door is just about shut. And this is the opportunity for if you are not in the body of Jesus Christ, this is the time for you to make a Rubicon decision. That is an irrevocable decision. That's when you got to make your mind up. I'm going for broke. I've started for the kingdom and I will not turn back no matter what goes on in my life. Oh, church of God, hear me this afternoon. Amen. I don't know where you are, amen, in this little window of time. But I do know this. The Holy Ghost is here for anybody who says, I want that. Hallelujah. And you are in a place where you can come down to this altar and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It is not mental assent. But when God fills you with the Holy Ghost, you will speak in glossolalia. You will speak in another language as the Spirit of God give utterance because that's the power of God that raised Christ from the dead. Church of God, hear me this afternoon that it is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That my uh, men like me, amen, and women who preach the gospel, we got to maintain what Jesus has already said. Hallelujah. Might I go on? He says, amen, for us as the people of God, he came to save sinners. Amen. You got to first of all understand the condition that you are in. You don't sin because you are a sinner. Amen. You are just a sinner by nature. You have absolutely nothing to do with how you got here. Amen. The Bible let us know that in Adam all die, but in Christ shall all be made alive. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Because, amen, death had passed upon all mankind because of one transgression. And y'all know the story. Amen. How, amen, Eve gave, amen, her husband fruit to eat and he ate thereof and the Bible says that their eyes of their understanding they were open hallelujah then he found out I was naked and God speaks and he said who told you that you were see there was a time amen what you see right now for walked around naked there was no shame but soon as they ate of the forbidden fruit hallelujah it put them in a position that they were at odds with God almighty hallelujah and that's why amen Jesus said I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly St. John chapter number 10 and verse number 10 says the thief comes not but to steal, kill and destroy, pray church How? because a day like this amen, I've got to preach this the way God has given unto us somebody's mind is going to come, amen, be illuminated today, somebody's heart it's going to be opened up. That's why I'm asking the church of the Lord Jesus Christ to pray because while you are in this room there is an enemy that is fighting your mind he's fighting your spirit he does not want you to hear anything that I'm saying from this book but this book is spirit and this book is life this is the only voice of God that has been revealed unto us can you shout hallelujah to God hallelujah while we're in this room for the weapons of our warfare they are not carnal but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. I'm praying right now, Lord God, give me utterance through the power of the Holy Spirit. Shake somebody loose, amen, from their stupor that they don't even understand that they're in. Can you give God some praise? Hallelujah to God. He goes on and he says, 
Amen. St. John 10 and 10. The thief comes not uh, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He says, but I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Amen. Not necessarily to steal. Amen. Uh, 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 from a store because. Amen. You have need of something. He said, but I'm come that you might have plenty. I come that you might have everything that you possibly need. That's why you got to come to the house of God because this is the only place where soul needs are met. This is the only place where guilt and stain, guilt and sin can be washed away. Amen. The guiltiness of sin and the stain thereof can be cleansed by being baptized in Jesus' name and being filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gives an utterance. Can you shout hallelujah? Oh, hallelujah. So our job, amen, amen, as the mouthpiece of God. Amen. Listen, let me say this. Amen. In passing, I know some of you all have heard a lot, amen, about what preachers are doing. I know that you've felt, you know, that preachers do nothing but run women and steal money and drive fancy cars and flashy suits and jewelry and all that old foolishness. I know you probably run across a hireling. Amen. Because that's what they are. Amen. Those who act like that and live in such a manner. Amen. They are but the synagogue of Satan. Hallelujah. Amen. They are. They look like us. But inwards they are ready even wolves but God has got somebody who is living what he preached he's got somebody who's holding on to what he said he's got somebody that don't mind doing what God has said to because there is a heaven to gain and there is a hell to shun are you listening to me this afternoon how I am convinced today just like the apostle Paul he says in Romans chapter number one I feel like preaching today how I'm doing warfare because the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. God is tearing down walls. He's breaking up foul ground while I'm preaching this word. And then God is doing something. And then it don't matter how long you've been a sinner, but as long as you come to the place where you understand that Jesus is the only Savior of the world, and you got to come to Him just as you are, weary, worn, and sad. I found in Him a resting place, and He has made me glad. I'm glad that I came into a place where my soul can be ransomed. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Paul tells us here, he writes to the church at Rome, and he makes it very clear to them because of his experience. Now, let me say this in passing. That a man with a man and experience with God. And again, when I say man, I mean man and woman. A man or woman that has an experience with Jesus Christ is never at the feet of a man or woman that just has a theory. You gotta have an experience. That's why I challenge you, amen, to ask God for the Holy Ghost. I said this two weeks ago, and I'm gonna say it again. Hallelujah to God. If you run across a preacher who tells you you don't need the Holy Ghost. Run for us, run. Hallelujah. Because that individual has not been illuminated by the power of God. God did not send anybody out to, to preach his word without his spirit. He made it clear, go back to Jerusalem and wait until you're endued with power from on high because you gonna need power to preach this when everybody don't like you. Mm. Glory. Ah. Here's what gives me pleasure. I am called and sent by God and I know it. His presence, his anointing, his hand testifies that I'm with you. Hallelujah to God. Amen. And whatever you go through, I 
I am yet with you. That's why every child of God, understand, you have a consistent comforter. He said, I will be with you always. I will be with you in trouble and I will bring you out. Hallelujah. That's a mighty good comforter to know that I'll be with you in trouble and I will bring you out after a while even though you might be in trouble as long as the comforter the Holy Ghost Jesus is with me the trouble can last I can endure it because he said I'll be with you he says in verse number 16 let me move on Ah, for I, the Apostle Paul writes and he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Listen, let me stop there for a moment. If you are ashamed of Jesus Christ in this adulterous generation, shame on you with all the stuff that's going on, amen, on social media, in television, amen. When I was growing up, they wouldn't even let you cuss on television. Hallelujah to God. Now, amen. Amen. They almost cussing you out uh, on television, uh, and we gobbling it up. Uh, hallelujah! That's why I've learned. Uh, amen. I've limited my television time. Amen. To I own. I own. I own. Uh -huh. Those are those shows. Okay, never mind. That's like. Ponderosa, that's like Bonanza. <laughs> Cannon. Maud. I know I have dated myself when I said Maud. Young folk don't know who Maud is. Maud is Dorothy from the Golden Girls. Her first name was Maud. That's where good times came from. Y'all know that. Hallelujah. He says, uh, amen, to everyone that believes. Uh, he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. The gospel of Jesus Christ, amen, must be taught, must be preached, amen, in the form that God has given it to us. He does not expect you to try to mix and to mingle. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can I say something today? Amen. I got to confess my sin. Hallelujah to God. Amen. This morning. Uh, amen. I don't know where my wife is at. She probably listened to me. Hallelujah. This morning. Uh, amen. I was making my first. Uh, hallelujah. Sweet potato pie. Uh, hallelujah to God. Uh, amen. And I followed uh, the instruction to a point. <laughs> I followed it to a point. Uh, but I messed around. And I added something to see what it would taste like. But then I looked at it, and I said, mm, this don't look right. All of a sudden, I heard my wife's voice, amen, and she said, why do you always just add stuff? Hallelujah. Just make it like it is. As I thought about it, hallelujah, I'm like, mm, Lord, I don't understand. Amen. It's just a little bit. I didn't put a lot in it. Hallelujah. Amen. But what it was, I put everything in it, but I added brown sugar. I don't like y'all. <laughs> so here I am. I'm trying my best. I want the consistency to be of a certain way. But the Spirit of God spoke to me this morning. And he, now this is after my wife spoke, my wife's voice in my head. But in my heart, the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, all I want people to do is follow the recipe. The reason why people are not receiving what God has demanded and promised is because the recipe is not being followed. Y'all are mixing stuff. you mixing gimmicks. You're mixing tricks. You're doing all kind of stuff to grow your church. But if you just preach Jesus Christ and him crucified, if you just preach Jesus, if you just preach the hope of the gospel, follow the recipe. Hallelujah. 
God didn't ask you nothing. He didn't ask you to tweak nothing. He didn't ask you to adjust nothing. He said, preach it. Preach it when they mad. Preach it when they glad. Preach faith to them. Preach hope to them. Preach baptism to them. Preach life to them. Preach the Holy Ghost to them. Follow the recipe. coming up with all kind of stuff in the place of the gospel it's so simple if you just preach it now let me stop a second ain't no sense of you preaching it when you ain't called to preach it that's why there's so much confusion There's a whole lot of folk who went but wasn't sent. You'll know them by the fruit that they bear. You'll know them by the message that they preach. Lord God, help us. Hallelujah. The recipe is not being followed. Where does it start? Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. How can they hear? Without a preacher. So what the enemy does. Is the Bible says. He transforms. His ministers. Into angels of light. They look like me. They wear robe like me. Even got a cross on their neck. They might even sweat like me. <laughs> but inwardly. Because of the message. Oh my. It's not the way God had intended it. Because it's mixed with gimmicks. Let me tell you something. Whenever you got to take down what God has said to try to win anybody, it's a good chance you trying to win folk that God ain't calling. Now he desires let anybody be saved but all got to come to repentance if God has really sent you to a place you will know the message when you hear it because the spirit on the inside will bear witness that this is it hallelujah thank you Jesus are you listening to me thank you Lord Paul made it clear again he said I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ Amen. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jews first and also the Gentile. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written. The just shall live by their faith. This is so valuable. Can you see why the enemy transforms his ministers and the angels of light because the deception is you think this is God. I never forget we had gone to a church and uh, they had a banner up and the banner was showing the horse rider on a white horse with a bow but no arrow. And they were testifying saying, oh, that's Jesus. No, honey, that ain't him. That's the Antichrist. He comes in the name of peace. Y'all got the wrong verse. So what happens is you've got to be, because listen, Lord, I'm, I'm trying to give you everything I got with this. Y'all got a soul. The stakes are so high. That it costs heaven everything. Your soul is of such value. That Jesus came himself. He didn't trust no angel. He didn't trust Moses. He didn't trust nobody. He said I'm doing this on my own. I'm coming myself to rescue and to ransom people. Because I am the blood and the sacrifice that only can pay for their sin. Of the blood of Jesus Christ. 
when you got baptized in Jesus name everything that you ever did Jesus covered it all up all that hidden stuff y'all might as well don't look at me like that y'all got some stuff that you don't want nobody to know about you ought to thank God that the mercy of God you could have died in that state you could have died in that stupor but God who is rich in mercy he looked at my ignorance and said I'm not going to let you die like a fool but I'm going to let you go to a meeting one night when your heart wasn't right and something got a hold to you might not like me now, but you'll love me once you get filled with the Holy Ghost. I promise you. I promise you. Once you see how God ransomed you, mm, hallelujah. That's why I got to preach faith to you. Because there's enough doubters that are in the world. Amen. Every time you turn the TV, somebody is throwing a rock against the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what we believe. There are those who tell you don't take all that. <sighs> Honey, give me everything God got since he's given it. You want all that heaven can afford. Why? Because I'm valuable. That's why I don't run with everybody. Lord. And you ought to ask God. Now this is, you are not snooty. Your nose ain't in the air. At least it shouldn't be. You ought to just know, because of who purchased me, I cannot be infected by your foolery. His blood done washed my garment. I knew what it was like when I was feeling suicidal. Not me, just using that. Pastor was thinking about committing suicide? Actually, yeah. I'll tell you how. I used to date a girl once. And my wife know she wasn't my wife at the time and I was driving from Pasadena and y'all know the 110 Pasadena is curvy and I'd driven up there in the rain she called me at work I want to see you I want to talk to you alright I'm coming I'll come up there so I drive up there in the rain, only to get up there. I think we should just go our separate ways. Well, you could have told me that on the phone. <laughs> so here I am. I'm driving back down the freeway. I'm mad. Me burning my gas, coming all the way up here, risking my life in the rain. And I was driving next to a gas truck. And I heard something said, just drive on underneath it. It ain't no point, no way. I may be a fool. I ain't that kind of fool. Because see, I'm going to tell you. Because the enemy is subtle. He will come to you when you sometime are at your lowest. And he'll talk to you. He'll drop seeds of doubt so he can try to get your mind. That's why you got to watch our young people. You got to watch what they watch. Hallelujah. Don't give them no privacy in your house. Take the dough off the hinge. Ain't no privacy in here. This is too important. And God is holding us accountable. Our young people need this. What are you going to hand them? A weak gospel? Because they're watching their mama and daddy fuss and fight and argue and then come to church. Praise the Lord. We ought to be examples of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Mm. This is, it's the saving. Listen, how in the world am I going to preach this 
and talk about how God has brought me out. He's done all of these things. And then I'm beating my wife up. She got to come in here with sunglasses on. With a black eye. Or I'm verbally and physically abusive to my children. And I'm supposed to be an example to the flock. Over which the Holy Ghost has made me the overseer. Y'all don't hear me. I'm trying to get this to you because some of y'all ain't going to never get you back again. You may, maybe, maybe two of y'all may come back. I don't know. But we'll see. Because this has lasting quality. That's why we got to preach it like it is. Like it's supposed to be. We cannot mix it. You can't water it down like Kool-Aid. It is what it is. Even when folk make you mad. And this makes them mad. I got some relatives right now. They mad because this I don't bite my tongue over. Because this is going to judge us all. So, listen. I, I don't want to hear about your mama's religion. Oh, uh, no. This, it ain't about religion. It's about salvation through Jesus alone. Because when it's all said and done, you're going to want to make sure since you got one soul and one shot, you got to make this one shot count. I ain't got time to be fooling around with dumb stuff. I got to save my soul because the devil is at work. He comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. That's his M.O. In case you want to know, that's his M.O. He comes just like that. That's why. Those of y'all that are playing hooky and you playing with this, you playing Russian roulette with your soul. Well, I don't want to come to church because I done been through a whole lot of church hurt. Honey, ain't no such thing as church hurt. That's people hurt. What about work hurt? What about shopping mall hurt? What about working in the kitchen hurt? What about working and cleaning up the parking lot hurt? a ploy of the enemy because where you have imperfect people you go always have trouble even in your house with your grown kids or with your kids who are 12 and they act like they grown Lord okay all right all right all right I'm gonna go back this is what this is a part the gospel must live you must be a part, you're a partaker of it as far as being obedient to it. Now you got to, Lord, okay, as the song used to say for the young folk, you got to walk it out. <laughs> now you got to learn how to work out your soul salvation with fear and with trembling. When all your friends want to do this and that, you say, no, I don't know. Because I belong to somebody. He said, I got you etched in the palm of my hand. That's what we should do when we were young people. Do you like me? Yeah. Circle yes or no. I ain't got time for maybe, y'all know. Yes or no. Because ain't no sense of me wasting my time. I'm so glad. He, God been writing on, he been writing on his hand about us for a long time. Look how much he loves you. He's invested in you. All he wants is a relationship. Mm. God, hallelujah. He just wants relationship. 
He don't want a part-time lover trying to do a full-time job. He ain't coping. I know some of y'all city stuff don't know nothing about. What's coping? Courting. Courting. He don't want a courting relationship. He wants a bona fide. I want you to love me and I love you. I have no problem showing you how much I love you. And guess what? The love ain't in the things, even though he gives you the things. Mm, he opens doors. He gives you favor. That's relationship. You can get, listen, you can get so tangled up in him that you can't even find how to get out. He's just that gracious to us. Can I say something to you? Jesus, you can get so tangled up in him that his very thoughts become yours. You will think a thing and he'll do it. That's the, I'm talking about walking it out. In that walk, that's when you start seeing him through a different lens. That's when you start seeing him through different colors. That's when you go to court and have to stand before a judge. And the true judge sits in the back on the bench. And he operates on our behalf. Because we try to do that which is lawful and right. Hallelujah. You can't tell me that you bent on doing what is right and what pleases God and he let you down. No sir. He don't do that. He will not allow our hope to be dashed. He will not let us be ashamed. Mm -mm. Uh, Paul's reason Again, not to be ashamed of the gospel is because it reveals the very righteousness of God and as such is able to save those who trust in it alone. When you trust this alone, I promise you, you will not be disappointed because he ain't that kind of God. Amen. Ah. Ah, the reason the gospel is God's saving power to everyone that believes is because it reveals the righteousness of God. A righteousness which is by faith alone. A fact which is confirmed in the gospel. Mm. The righteousness of God. It's our hope. He gives it to us. We ain't never been this way before. But I will say this, once you get saved, there's going to be a struggle. The old you wants to dominate the new you. But light and darkness can't occupy the same space. So you're going to have a warfare between old you and new you. This is what coming to church is all about. Because when you come to the house of God and Bible class and Sunday school and any other thing you can get, you're going to have to learn how to walk with God and wage a good warfare. Because the war is between good and evil, right and wrong. So now you now put yourself in a position well, you're in a constant fight even when you sleep. Because the enemy will have you dream stuff you know did not come from heaven. But it's a warfare. He's cunning. You low down. Bishop McMurray used to tell us years ago, anybody that kick you when you're down, they dirty. And that's what the enemy does. He wants to kick you when you're down. When you're at your lowest that's where the gospel stands up. 
like a strong man or woman and get you strength. You start praying different. You start thinking different. You start anointing everything in your I'll never forget. When I was young, I had oil running down everything. Oil was on the doorpost. Oil was running down the chairs at the house. Oil was everywhere because I realized I'm in a warfare and I need this house to be a sanctified. It's sanctified because I'm here. Even though it was my mama's house. She didn't have no hope. She didn't know what she was up against. Mm. Glory. So because you are who you are and who's in you now, you have a responsibility to respond favorably to him. Your neighbors ought to know there's a difference about you. Your neighbors ought to know. They ain't never at home on Sunday. Where do they go? My dogs even know we gone. Don't look for them on Sunday. They ain't going to never be here. They sure ain't here on Saturday. Thank God he left enough food out here for the weekend until he get back. So it's this gospel if it is hid, it is hid to them that are lost. And the God of this world has blinded their minds. They don't, can't even see how far from the grace of God they are. Because they blind it by having a good time. They're blinded by enjoying the here and the now. They're blinded. The enemy doesn't show them the end result. He just shows them having a good time. Mm -hmm. But when you come into a setting like this, it's a sobering thought. Because you may not have an immaterial part of me that's going to live on outside of the demise of the physical body? And the answer is yes. Real you going to live on when we put this clay temple in a wall or in the ground. But the real you stands before a just God who will say well done good for a preacher that's a scary thought I don't care how big you build churches I don't care how many members you got from the east coast to the west coast that just says if you're not giving this like it is, that just means you got a lot of blood on your hands. Are you listening to me? I know I'm old fashioned. I'm told I'm a old man in a young man's body. But guess what? Is still right. So here we are. All of y'all that are watching. Those of you that are here. Under the sound of my voice. This is an opportunity. For you. As we say in the country. Rake up in your own yard. You ain't got time to be looking at nobody else. You ain't got time to be. Assessing nobody else. It's you. It's you as an individual. You know where you are. This is not just another Easter Sunday. This is another Sunday that is closer to the rapture of the church. I don't know when he's coming. I don't know the day nor the hour. 
Watch them boogers that tell you when. Because they're lying. They don't know. No man knows the day nor the hour. He just says, be ye also ready. So here we are, making ourselves ready. This is the dressing room. Amid the dressing room in the back. Well, we have clothes to bury you in. In this lukewarm water back here. I don't care what you've done. I don't care how bad it is. I don't care what it looks like. His blood has enough power to completely do an overhaul of your whole life. His blood reaches back and it covers and it also reaches forth and covers the mistakes that he knows you're going to make. You just got to have enough sense to appeal to the blood. He covers this. Not only does he cover this. He takes away the guilt. So that you can serve him freely. So this is a time which is what we have and what we call the altar call. Pray church.